We are back to the titles of God, titles of Jehovah. Which is the last one that you wrote? Remember we are still talking about number 16. <laughs> Divine love. And according to 1 John chapter 4 verse 16, God is love. And this God has been described using several titles that manifest his love towards us in certain ways. Which is the last one that you wrote? I... <laughs> that was number 10 Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Shalom was our 10th title as we look at the 16 titles that manifest or represent God being love and the way he manifested his love it was Judges chapter 6 verse 24 Judges chapter 6 verse 24 Jehovah Shalom today we looked at the 11th title of Jehovah the 11th title of Jehovah and that is Jehovah Sabaoth Jehovah Sabaoth 1 Samuel chapter 1 verse 3 1 Samuel chapter 1 and verse 3. This title is the one that we are told concerning Elkanah who went to the temple every year. And in verse 3, it is written, This man went from his city year by year to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were the Lord's priests. Our concern, it is just verse 3, our concern is that title, Jehovah Sabaoth. That is the title that you find recorded there, the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts. This title, the Lord of hosts, appears 200 and 81 times in the Bible. 281 times in the Bible. Among the titles of God, this is the one that appears most. Almost uh, in all um, both testaments and so many times. 281. Jehovah Sabaoth means the one who is possessing. The one who is possessing. The one who is possessing. God owns everything. And he owns a host of angels who are ready for battle and for his service. Just help us with Psalms 148. Psalms 148. The Lord possesses everything. And because he's the possessor, he is the one who has the biggest host. 
the biggest army. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the highest. Verse 2. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. The Lord has a host of angels. And not only angels. Everything belongs to him because he's a possessor. But as we look at the Lord of hosts, we are looking at this title concerning God who possesses a bigger army than the demons that we stand against. <laughs> According to the scriptures, Revelation chapter 12. When Satan, the dragon, was thrown down, his tail only drew a third. So two thirds belong to God. For every demon, there are two angels. For every demon, there are two angels on the side of God. So every time that we find ourselves in situations and the challenge, I'm sorry to say this, the challenge is we see more demons than angels. Everything we mention, we mention a demon. When are we going to start seeing the angels? You know, there was this servant of Elisha which yesterday I looked at and for the first time, <laughs> you know, many of us believe it is Gehazi. It's, it was not Gehazi. It is just a young man. When we give this story, that's found in Second Kings chapter 6. Help us with Second Kings chapter 6. It is very important. You know, if you want to defeat somebody. If you want to defeat somebody, show them that you are greater and more powerful than them. Begin to make war cries. Have you seen the rugby people? All blacks. New Zealand. Eh? When they want to scare a team, a rugby team, that they want to face, they make a lot of noise. They hit their chest and stamp their feet and make a war cry. And you get intimidated even before you get into the field. That is exactly what the devil tries to do to us. He wants us to see more demons in everything. Then we see God and we see his power and the angels that are on our side. And we find a good example in 2 Kings chapter 6. In 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha receives a revelation from God. Every time that the, 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 the enemies want to attack the king of Israel, and Elisha sends a word to the king every time and tells the king, don't pass uh, through that side because the Syrians are waiting for you. Don't pass through that side because they are waiting for you to capture you. And I don't know why the king doubted the servant of God, the man of God, because every time he received a word from Elisha, he would send spies to go and look at that place and see whether what Elisha said was true. And every time the spies brought a report that what the servant of God told you is true. They were waylaying you in this place. So the king of Syria decides we want to know who sells us. We want to know who betrays us. Because every time we want 
uh, to arrest the king of Israel, there is somebody who tells him that we, from our midst, there is somebody who sells, who leaks the information. But there was a man there. I don't know how he got to know this. Whether by revelation or he heard about it, I don't know. He told the king, don't disturb yourself. There is somebody in that nation, a man of God, a prophet, who tells the king whatever that you share, even in your bedroom, he can hear you all that far. And the king said, is that true? He said, yes. Where is the person found? He said, Dothan. Now imagine. If, some, if, if Elisha hears what the king discussed even in the bedroom, do you send people to go and arrest that person? Because by the time you are sending people, they are already hearing. Because they hear everything that you discuss. And uh, that happened. And Elisha was in his tent. Verse 14 to 17. Elisha was in, in the city relaxing. So the Syrian king sent their horses, chariots, and a great army. Horses, chariots, and a great army to arrest one person. They came by night and surrounded the city. Verse 15. When the servant of the man of God, we are not given the name, so let us not use the name, let us not call him Gehaz because Gehaz left the presence of Elisha when he became a leprous. Do you remember that? When he took things from Naaman and Elisha told him this leprosy will come upon you and all your generations because of this greed Geh has left and never walked with Elisha again but there was a young man we are not given the name this young man woke up and went out before I have said that it's, uh, it's Gehaz even me, I have said it is Gehaz but I remembered there's something I was teaching about Gehazi. And Gehazi parted ways with Elisha after the case of Norman. After the case of Naaman. Chapter 5. After the case of Naaman. And he went. And the next time you find Gehazi anywhere, he's speaking to a king. He's a storyteller. We have preached that message before. He's telling stories of Elisha. He's not with Elisha. And this young man, that's what the Bible calls him, gets out and he looks. When he went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was surrounding the city. Elisha's servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? But this was not something new to Elisha. The God who revealed to him before had revealed to him about these soldiers and the horses and the chariots and he was not afraid and that is who we should be. When you get a revelation of who you are as a child of God and where God has hid you in Christ and Christ in God, that if somebody is to reach you, they must first of all defeat God the Father and then defeat God the Son, 
defeat God the Holy Spirit before they reach you. That is your position in Christ. The challenge is we don't know who we are. And we don't know the value that God has placed on us. Look at Elisha. Elisha was able to discover who he was. And he was able to know the value that God had placed on him. One person. Not the whole city. One person. God releases. Let's continue. Elisha answered, fear not. This is what we need to tell every one of us. Tell your neighbor, fear not. Demons are not powerful than Jesus. Demons are not powerful than the blood that covers you. But fear has been instilled in us. And the devil has magnified himself before us. With war cries. Intimidating us. That we even don't dare rebuke him. We don't dare rebuke him. Why? Because fear. And fear is sin. Because fear is not of faith. <laughs> Many of us, the truth is, the reason why you pray before you go to sleep is so that you are not choked at night and demons don't harass you. You don't pray because you are worshipping God. You don't pray because you are thanking God for the day. The thanksgiving part is very small. And the worship is very small. The rest, hey, <laughs> you cover the sufurias, you cover the, you cover the, the chairs, you cover, and you remove all demons from everything, including the clothes in the wardrobe. Brethren, why are we afraid? And yet the Bible says, greater is he who is in us than the devil who is around us. Elisha told the young man, fear not. Tell your neighbor, fear not. The position we have elevated the enemy if he was what we consider him to be he would have finished us a long time ago uh. <laughs> i'm not underrating the devil physically we are not able to handle him but in christ we are more than conquerors. And that is where we are. We are in Christ. But we have come to a position demonology and the, and the topic of demonology and the subject of demonology it is not supposed to instill fear to us. You may be taught so that you can know how these things manifest and how to handle them when they manifest. But because we are not properly grounded in knowing who we are in God and the God to whom we belong, fear has become everything around us. So, Elisha told this young man, fear not. 
for those with us are more than those with them. Listen to that statement. Those with us are more than those with them. He didn't say are more than them. He was talking about the soldiers. He was talking about the chariots. He was talking about the big army. But Elisha is saying something that goes beyond physical and natural. He says, those, with, those who are with us are more than those who are with those armies. So they had demons behind them. Are you getting? They had spirits that were influencing their lives. There were demons behind these soldiers, this army. And for Elisha to qualify what he was saying. Verse 17. Verse 17. Elisha prays a prayer. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, I pray you open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes, the young man's eyes not Gehaz every other place where Gehaz has been mentioned he has never been called a young man he has been called Gehaz the Lord opened the young man's eyes and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. I don't know whether you can hear what this verse is saying. The people have come and surrounded the city. But Elisha is not moved. Because he knows something. That the young man and those in the city don't know. He is able to see beyond the natural. He is aware of who he serves. That he serves the Lord who possesses all the hosts. He is the Lord of hosts. That the Lord has a bigger army of angels. That the Lord himself is a man of war but he doesn't need to fight. <laughs> and Elisha is not moved by these horses and whatever. He continues to enjoy his sleep. But there is this young man who does not know what Elisha knows. Who does not see what Elisha sees. And that's where many of us are. We are not able to see what God sees. It is, I don't know whether we forget after being taught when situations arise. This was a situation that had risen in the life of Elisha. It was an attack. This was an attack. Just like any other situation that the enemy can bring. And that's why Elisha is saying behind these people, these people are not alone. The army of the Syrians are not alone. They have some spirits, spiritual beings with them. And we also have with us and the ones with us are more than the ones they have. The young man was just seeing the, the, the soldiers from Syria. The Syrian army. But Elisha was seeing beyond the Syrian army, the physical Syrian army 
He was seeing the demons behind. And he said, the angels with us are more than the demons that are with them. So don't be afraid. And then he prayed, God open the eyes. Today may the Lord open our eyes. Our spiritual eyes. So that we can see the angels that God has released to us. To secure us. To minister to us. His hosts that he releases to encamp around us. They are more than the demons that come. To harass us. To attack us. To do whatever that they are sent to do to us. Because we are valuable to God. He bought us at the price of the blood of Jesus. His own blood. God's own blood. So he doesn't, he doesn't count us like gambuds. That we only wear when we want to pass through waters and mud. <laughs> Do you wear moccasins when you are passing through mud? No, you don't. Do you go with stilettos, sisters? Kwashamba? Kurima? No, that shoe is very expensive to you. So you, you value it and you wear it occasionally. God does not play games with the devil. No, they don't play games. That's why God releases protection. For every demon, there are two angels. Because Satan only fell with a third. Two thirds belong to God. There are two thirds of angels on the side of God. And that's why Elisha is saying, those who are with us, and they were just two. But when this young man looked, it is as if he was not there. He saw a great army surrounding the mountain around Elisha. So Elisha was in a place that was lifted. Elisha was spiritually. Elisha was in a place that was exalted. And the young man could see where Elisha was. And the angels and the chariots of fire that surrounded Elisha. And the mountain where Elisha was. And that's why the young man did not get afraid. And you see what Elisha does next. He prays God. Make them blind. And they are all blinded. And the demons could not help them. The demons could not help them. And all of them are led into the city. And handed over to the king. And when the king is told. Then Elisha pray, prays again. God open their eyes. It's not that they were all blindfolded with a handkerchief. No, but they could not see. There was a greater power at work than the power that was backing them. That something just happened to them. They were, oh, who are you looking for? Oh, we are looking for the man of God. Okay, come, let me go. And, and they had been told where he was. And they were surrounding the right place. But the power of God just came upon them. And they became like blind. They were not thinking. They were not sensitive. They were not spiritually alert. There was a greater power at work than the power that was backing them. And they were led by Elisha up to the middle of the city. And Elisha calls the king and says, here are your people. And the king calls Elisha, my father, what do I do with them? Should I kill them? He says, no, you don't kill what God has already handed over to you. Just cook for them. Let them eat. And then release them. I'm telling you the truth. You will, even if you are the, you are the toughest person in war, you will not come back. 
that somebody would have killed you. But instead of killing you or enslaving you, they give you food until you go. Next time when you come, come hungry. You will eat some more. <laughs> you can't fight such a person. And the Bible says from that time, the king of Syria never again tried to attack the king of Israel. How do you fight such a war? And this is our position. Because of God's love towards us. There is something he has done. There is where he has placed us. There is an army of angels he has assigned to us. What does Psalms 91 say? God will give angels charge concerning you. That scripture was not concerning Jesus. That's why Jesus did not listen to the devil. It is concerning us, children of God. That angels will be given charge. They are commanded by God. Because he possesses them. He owns them. He tells them, go, secure that one. So that your foot itself does not dash. You don't dash your foot against. Stone. Not, not something bigger. The angels make sure that some rocks that you don't see. They have taken care of that. Or they have lifted your leg so that you don't dislocate your leg <laughs> when you're stepping on a rock. And you just realize, I, Napo. Okay. And you go, you don't know what the work the angels have done. Simply because you don't see them. You don't realize the love that God showers on you. Even by releasing angels to take care of of you. So if demons and Satan are more powerful than we count them to be, they would have finished us a long time ago. If those sorcerers and witches <laughs> are more powerful than the, 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 like the way you exalt them, they would have finished you a long time ago. Oh, Hachawi, Walosi, they will come. But on your side, you have more to take care of them and to take care of the demons behind them than you think. Kwa sababu kila wakati tunaona pepo tu, Kwa nini atuonangi malaika? Ni situation ngapi umeona malaika? In comparison na zile situation unaona pepo. So who do we glorify more? Please don't misunderstand me. To glorify simply means to manifest, to reveal, to show forth. What the Lord is saying is what he means. So when God allows you to see an activity of a demon, it doesn't matter how many they are. You have twice the number of angels in the same place. Handling those demons. And I'm telling you, one angel is powerful. One. It is only one angel who swept over Egypt. And killed all firstborns in one night. It's only one angel who swept the camp of the Israelites. Killing how many thousands? <laughs> In one, one, if one angel can deal with uh, hundreds of thousands, imagine the angels that have been assigned to you. 
the work that they do. And you know, they are not doing it at will. They have been commanded by God, assigned, given an assignment because he possesses them and he possesses us. He doesn't possess demons. Even though at times demons do some work that belongs to the kingdom of God. One man who may have gotten understanding of this, Smith Wigglesworth. It is written in his book that one day he was sleeping and he felt commotion <laughs> in the house. Because Mabati peke yake Kuna sikia wewe kwak yani unaita Yesu <laughs> Ni vizuri kuita Yesu Ni vizuri kuita Yesu kuliko kuita mama Lakini wengine bado naitanga mama <laughs> Atakusaidiaje na yuko ushago Woi mama atakusaidiaje ita Yesu in that situation. So he felt some commotion in his room. The bed was being moved. He woke up and God opened his eyes and he saw Satan. And Smith Wigglesworth said, oh, so it is you. He even didn't pray. He didn't rebuke. Just told the devil, return my bed where it was supposed to be. Where it was. And he covered himself and slept. Satan was so intimidated. Returned the bed and left the room. That is somebody who knows who he is. And where he stands in God. And he is not so special. The same privilege is extended to every one of us. To use the name of Jesus. Jesus giving us authority. What did he say? I give you power. Over all. Not some. Over all. Powers of the enemy. But what happens? Some of us, either it's lack of knowledge or we ignore it. I don't know what happens. But we do not exercise the, pos the authority and the power of the position that God has given to us in him. And he has given us this because he loves us. He has given us power. That whatever we bind here, it shall be bound in heaven. What we lose here, it shall be loosed in heaven. But what happens? Many times we call God to come and bind. We call God to come and bind the devil and he has given us power and authority. To use the name of Jesus when you just I pray that one day that God will just open your eyes when you say Jesus and you see what happens in the spiritual realm. You just see what happens. The commotion that is there. Angels standing straight waiting for the next command. Demons running because of the power in that name. But we don't use that name as often as we speak of demons, as we speak of witchcraft, as we speak of sorcery, as we speak of the devil. Something has to change. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established for you. So what do you decree? Witchcraft? Sorcery? Change. 
God is at work more than the devil. The angels of God are at work more than demons. Because they are twice the number of demons. We don't know the number of demons in the world. We are just told it's a third that fell with the devil. We don't know how million or billions they are. But the number they are, the angels are double. So as a child of God, who do you belong to? You belong to God. And who is this that is your father? He is the Lord of hosts. He is the Lord who possesses. He is mighty in battle. He has never been defeated in any war. But I'm telling you, many times heaven is disappointed. Many times heaven is disappointed. Because when we are supposed to be revealing God, manifesting him, glorifying him, Yes, that is the time we are speaking of witches and sorcerers. If somebody came and threw the head of a chicken in front of your door, you should know something stopped them from getting in. Something stopped them from getting in. And it's not just something. It is the angels that are sent to guard you. If they were powerful, they would have gotten in. But your house is covered. <laughs> it may be having some cracks that you see outside when you are inside. But in the spiritual realm, it is fully covered. Demons try to find a place to penetrate. They can't. But there you are. You see a head of a chicken or you find, a, you find an egg in front of the door. I said, why? Nimekwisha. Umekwisha no bado uko hai. Kama walikuwa wanaweza auta unge ya muka. You get to your business place and you find ashes. Just rebuke in Jesus' name and sweep. That, those ashes will not stop you. Just call on the name of the Lord. And whatever those ashes represent will just vanish. You don't have to travel far to defeat demons. Right where you are. <laughs> right where you are. You know, there is no distance in the spirit. There is no distance in the spirit. In the spiritual realm, there is no distance. You rebuke a demon when you are here and it is operating in the U.S. It hears. There is no distance in the spirit. Jesus says to the woman who was crying after him because of the daughter. He says, go. <laughs> Be it unto you according to your heart's desire. And immediately the girl was delivered wherever, wherever she was. Jesus did not have to travel all the way to rebuke a demon. He just told the woman, oh, your faith is great. Let it be according to your faith. And immediately you remember the centurion? Pleading with saying, Jesus, you don't have to come. Please, just speak a word. And my servant who is at home will be well. There is no distance in the spiritual realm. So, at you can deal with things that are happening in your business. Ukombali. Oh. Atitumeona mutu anapita pita hapa, okay. Hey, anamwaga mwaga maji. Sawa. 
na kausha hayo maji katika jina la Yesu Kristo na pepo zinazoambatana na hayo maji katika jina la Yesu na wafunga na kuwarudisha kuzimu Please don't send them back to the Don't return them back to the sender <laughs> Wajua tuna practice uchawi bila kujua Muchawi amekuroga na wewe unamuroga Ukituma back to the center sasa umekuwa nini? Nauliza umekuwa nini? <laughs> Ni nini unatumia huyo mtu? Eh? Umemtumia uchawi. Ye yeah, amekutumia uchawi? Alafu na wewe unamrudishia uchawi. Umekuwa nini? <laughs> there are some things are not spiritual principles they have been manufactured by men to make us their slaves I'm sorry what you are supposed to do is to bind not to send back to the sender you know somebody used a human principle and brought it on television Na alafi kawa inagonga bang. Back to the center inatokea back. Inatokea ina flash. Wow. Just because of the postal address. He used something from post office. And looked at it. He returned to sender. Because <laughs> imekuja kwa box yangu. Na si yangu return to sender. Sasa akaona na wengine sasa umechukua uchawi back to sender return to sender return to sender na ume back to sender wacha kuwa mchawi wewe ni mtoto wa Mungu what you're supposed to do is to deal with that spirit <laughs> ai bwana asifiwe you have a god who loves you so much and he possesses not only you but even angels that he releases and assigns to you we are only 7 point something billion on the surface of the earth angels are more than that so there are angels that are sent in every situation to take care of you i pray that we will see more angels and glorify god than seeing more demons and getting afraid and terrified. God has manifested his love towards us. And this is what Elkanah, Elkanah discovered this. And every year he went to sacrifice. Every year he went to the Lord in Shiloh. Every year he went before the Lord. And there, kulikuwa na watu, kulikuwa na wajamaa wengine, wezi, kwa sadaka. Hofni and Finehan. Oh, <laughs> sons of Eli, priests of the Lord. But they did not discover what Elkanah had discovered. They were priests. But they were causing sacrilege. Stealing holy things. But Elkanah, that was not his concern. Elkanah sacrificed to the Lord faithfully every year. Even if Hofni waligua wanachukua hizo sinyama nononono, tena wanatumana, go and dip it. Bring the fat one. Na mutu wakijaribu kuleta shida. Your temple guards, beat them and bring the meat at the temple. So we have these two groups existing together. So you really need to know who you serve. You really need to know the one that you belong to, the one who possesses the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabaoth, the one who fights every battle that concerns you. And the truth is, the Lord does not come down and fight. No, he just uses his agents. God uses his agents. One time Israel was invaded, and when the enemies were running away, 
stones started falling from heaven. Have you read that in the scripture? Yeah. I don't know whether those stones are part of what is the remains of making our mansions in heaven. I don't know. But stones fell from heaven and killed more people than the soldiers killed. I don't know. Another time, <laughs> Elisha just receives a word from the Lord and says, oh, after a song, okay, let Israel dig holes in the desert. You will not see dew and you will not see rain, but there will be water for you and for the animals so that you can be strong to continue fighting. And they didn't know that this, the water became a, a weapon. When the Moabites woke up in the morning, the sun shining, <laughs> on their side they saw blood on the waters and said, yeah, and they were defeated. Look at Jehoshaphat. Lifts a letter to the Lord. God, read. And God says, sends us, I mean, God does not come, he's too great for this. Says, tell Jehoshaphat what to do. And the angel says, uh, the, 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 the prophet says, do this, put the praise and worship in front. Waleo wange kubali. Tunahenda kupigana na alishabab. Alavu. Tunazema praise and worship. Nyinyi ndiyo mutakuwa mbele. Buwana asema. Hey, nakuambia. Hati buwana amesema. Majeshi, wacha majeshi yende, zi tutawaombea tukiwa hapa. Tutaimba, tutasifu, tutawabak spiritually. But the praise of worship and worship of that time believed the word of the prophet. And they were put in front. And they went just singing, the Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. The Lord is good and his mercies. One song, one chorus. The Lord is good and his mercies endures forever. The Lord is good and when the enemies when they came to the valley where the enemies were, they were all dead people. Because the Lord just sent something among them. Panga. Waka katakatana. So the, the Israelites just went to collect the spoils. The swords, sorry, the swords, the, the clothes, the food. And those who had threatened Jehoshaphat, they killed themselves. God did not have to come down. This is how God gives us victory. We need to focus more on the side of God. When you see a situation, look for God. Where is God here? God, what do you want me to see? Many are the times that we don't see what God wants to reveal through situations and circumstances. Because our eyes are focused on the enemy. Our eyes are focused on what we are not supposed to see. We are supposed to see beyond. But we focus on what we are seeing. And we are discouraged. Our faith is weakened. Fear comes in. We see ourselves done. But that is not what God wants us to see. By the time God is allowing a situation to come, he wants us to see him. He wants us to see him. Job did not know what was going on. And for weeks, Job was there. People speaking and condemning him. You must have seen Job. You must stop pretending to be righteous. You must have seen. You repent. And Job is saying, please, brethren, 
Imagine some one person speaks a whole week. The rest are quiet. And they are eating and sleeping. And what is the target of the enemy? Job, curse, God, and die. So all these people were doing whatever they were doing under a certain influence for Job to curse God. The wife even told Job openly, curse God and die. What else am I remaining with? Children are dead. Harvest is burnt. Animals are taken away. Servants have all ran away. You are skin. I can't touch you anywhere. Ah. <laughs> Did she want Job to die so that she can be freed from the covenant of marriage? Cast God and Job said, Wait, don't speak like a foolish woman. How do I? God has given us all these things. But Job did not know. And Job said, God gave and God took away. It is not God who took away. We know it was not God. And many times when somebody has rested, that's what we normally say. Job spoke out without knowledge. He thought it was God who was taking but it was the enemy attacking. And we say, God gave and God has taken. May the name of the Lord be blessed. And no, it, it was not God. It was the devil attacking Job and his property for a cause that Job may blame who? God and curse God. <laughs> and God and the devil, each one was, see, was looking. God knew. He's the Lord of hosts. He was giving Job victory, strength, peace, encouragement. Until one day. Until one day. When Job was pressed, just like Samson, vexed in the spirit, Job said, now, Cast be the day. Hey. Cast be. When I was conceived. Cast be the legs that took good news. That has, hey, 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 hey. God did not allow Job to continue. Because he was going now beyond. He was about now to do. Because if you cast the day that you cannot make. Who are you casting? 